this video we're going to be talking in depth about the PBR Painter masking system. So as we did in the previous video, I'm going to add a new layer and I'm going to turn on a couple of channels. So I might make a color and maybe I'll make this metallic and maybe do the roughness like that. So I now have this layer sitting on top of my background. And so all I'm seeing is this layer. And as I explained in the previous video, you can use masks to limit where this layer is showing on the material. So with this layer selected, I'm now going to add a new mask. When you do this, you'll notice that there are various different mask types. And this is what I'm going to be explaining in detail in another video. But just for example, you have smart masks, which are basically these very specific and kind of preset masks that are meant to achieve a certain effect. And by the way, this is constantly growing this library of smart masks. So when you actually watch this video, there may be more masks available. There are also options to add images. So this is where you have a specific image or you may want to paint an image as a mask. You can add geometric masks, which are based on the geometry of your mesh. You can add procedural masks, which are based on these procedural textures. And then you can add things like gradients, ambient occlusion, and some other settings in here that are a bit more advanced that I'm going to talk about in that later video. So to start with, I'm going to add a simple noise mask because it's kind of one of the easiest to understand because it's just adding that kind of noise effect over the whole material. Now, before I do that, I'll just point out this little checkbox here is a bit too advanced for this video, but basically it's relating to the fact that a lot of these masks will use information about the mesh, like the geometry. And in PBR Painter, within the baking tab, you can actually bake this information in advance to help with computation and also make some of these masks available in Eevee, whereas otherwise they would only be available in cycles. But for now, we're going to ignore that and we're just going to deal with the masks themselves. So clicking OK. So we saw this in the last video when I add a mask, what it's going to do is it's going to basically remove this layer from the black parts of the mask. So again, we can click preview mask. And it's showing that these black regions are basically not getting any of this color, as we can see there and they're just picking up their color from whatever is in this background in here, like that. And same goes for the metallic and the roughness. So we're simultaneously masking all of these different channels using this mask setup in here. So in general, when you add a mask, you can have all of your settings accessed within this panel. So you select the mask you're interested in. The first sub panel in here is generally going to give you the specific settings for that mask. So in this case, it's the procedural settings. So at the moment we're using a noise and you can change things like the scale of that noise, the detail, all of the things that you'd be generally familiar with if you've worked with noise nodes in Blender previously. And then in this case, we can change the type to something else like that. And then we can change those details as well. And from the point of view of the mask, we can see that that's actually changing where those black and white regions are appearing and hence where this layer is appearing. The second sub panel that you'll see is something that's going to appear for every single mask. And that is two different color ramps. If you're completely unfamiliar with color ramps, basically what they do is they take an input range of colors and they change the output based on these sliders here. And in this case, there are two color ramps. The first one is corresponding to this specific mask. And I'm going to talk about the second one in a second, but just focusing on this one, what we can see is if we preview this mask by dragging this slider from the left, we're increasing, oops, increasing the amount of black on that mask because we're pulling the black across. So we're compressing that whole range into this very small range where we've got most of it is black and then this gradient across here. And of course you can do the same thing with the white like that. And you can also change the colors. So you can change the brightness of these different ones. You can add new points so you can make some kind of complex patterns like that. So you can get all sorts of interesting effects by playing around with these color ramps. And so if we turn that preview off, what you can see is that now we have this kind of really cool effect based on how we've set this color ramp up. If you click this invert button, what it does is it just literally inverts every single one of these points or the elements of the color ramp. So that's a really useful button as well. 
All right, so before I talk about the second color ramp, I'm actually gonna quickly jump across to the last panel in here because this color ramp relates to the output of the entire stack of the masks in here, which I haven't talked about yet. So I'm gonna leave that until I add extra masks and then we can start to understand how these masks get added together to create a mask stack, which is gonna give you an overall mask effect. But now I'm just gonna show you this. So this is the mapping panel, which basically controls independently things like the X and Y scale. So we can change the X scale like that. Location, rotation. And then you can change whether this is object or UV. So now it's kind of mapped to the UVs of the mesh. And so these are just general concepts of mapping, which you'd be familiar with if you've worked with Blender nodes in the past. All right, so that's pretty much the general overview of how you would modify an individual mask. Now we're gonna talk about this mask stack concept. Basically the PBR Painter mask system is also a layered system. So similar to the layers in here, within each layer, you can build up complex masks by adding separate masks on top of each other. So we can add another mask in here. And for this one, I'm gonna use a gradient because this is really nice to explain this concept. Click OK, and what's going to happen is if we preview the stack in here, what you can see is it's now combining these two masks to give you this output like this. And so this concept is basically going to give you a huge amount of flexibility in how you actually apply each of your layers. So you can add as many masks as you want, and you can blend them together in whatever way you want. So for example, we can change this, we can, we can leave it at mix and we can change how it's blended together. So if we put the factor down to zero, it's now just the procedurals. If we put it up to one, it's now just the gradient. So if we do something like that and we mix it together, we can then play around with this second color ramp now. So this is the one I was talking about that controls the final output. And this color ramp will basically take in all of this kind of combined mask information and it will let you tune that to give a very specific output. So if we change these sliders like this, what you can see is we can now get these really cool effects where we're basically having these really specific outputs based on these masks in here. So if we turn this preview off, what we can see now is we're now applying a gradient and just applying this procedural mask to this one side of our model. And just like with the layers, we can change the blending. So you can use all of the different blending tools that you have for layers. So for example, we can change this to multiply and then you can control how strongly you multiply that across. Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about is these other tools up here. So we've already seen how to add a mask. You can also duplicate a mask with this button. So now we have two of those masks and they're now independent from each other. So you can control these ones separately. And I'm just gonna remove that one. You can hide masks. So this controls the opacity. So you can basically get the same effect by hiding it or setting that to zero. This button here is gonna let you import a mask from a different layer or from a different material. At the moment it says that there's no masks that can be imported, but if we add a new layer, and click import. So this is the same button. We can then select our material. So we're working with the active material, which layer we're going to import from this layer, which mask you can import the whole stack. If you want, you can import a specific mask. So we pick maybe that one, click okay. Now we've imported that exact same mask with the exact same setup from that other material in here, which we can see by previewing like this. All right, so I'm going to delete that layer. Of course, we have we also have a little bin here, which is just for deleting masks. And the final icon here is a merge button, which is also going to act very similarly to this button here. And both of these are basically going to let you bake your masks to images so that you're not generating those masks from procedural nodes on the fly. Now, there's different reasons you might want to do this. One, it can reduce the computation because you have a single image. You're not generating these live. Two, it can let you use masks in Eevee that would otherwise only be possible in cycles. So to demonstrate that, let me just remove these ones. 
So for example, some of these smart masks are based on edges or ambient occlusion. So this grunge one works based on ambient occlusion. So for example, this rust mask looks like this. And when we add that, what you can see when I'm using Eevee or material preview mode, it looks like this, but in cycles, it actually looks different. The reason it looks different is the rust mask actually finds the crevices. So again, having a look in material preview mode, you see that we lose some information. Now you can turn on ambient occlusion for Eevee, which is just currently not enabled, but there are other situations like for the edge wear masks that really need to be done in cycles. So if you want to use this mask, but you want to use Eevee, or you want to use an edge wear mask in Eevee, what you can actually do is you can click this bake button. What we need to do is set up our resolution settings. So I'm going to do maybe 2K. I won't go into depth about the baking itself because I'm going to talk about that specifically in a future video. But essentially this margin is just the margin around your UV islands that you have. And generally you can leave that as it is. And I'm not going to change this for the sake of this video. I'm just going to leave it all for now. Click OK. And what you'll see is that now it's baking that image so that what we have is an image that captures that exact same masked area. What it's going to do by default, it's going to get going to hide this, this previous mask. So you still have access to it. If you're happy with the baked result, which I am in this case, you can just delete that old one. And now we have a single image that is no longer generating this mask from procedural nodes. So now if we swap back to Eevee, what you can see is it's now working correctly because it's now filling these crevices as it should. So now we can turn off this and we can see that we now have our material like this. Okay, so the other thing you can do with the baking is that you can click this merge button when you have more than one mask. What it's gonna do is it's gonna do the exact same thing, but instead of baking a single mask, it's gonna bake the entire output. So if you have 10 masks all lined up in your stack and you have a single output, when you click that merge, it's going to basically show that output. It's going to bake it to a single image and create a single mask that's going to capture all of that information in that one image. So that's really useful if you want to do that at the end when you've finished making your masks and you're happy with the result and you want a simple and computationally efficient version of that baked as a single image. So to quickly demonstrate that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a procedural. So now we have two different masks. The individual ones look like this. The stack looks like this. And I can maybe modify this so it's a bit more obvious. Something like that. So if we click merge, again, we have the same kind of settings in here. Click OK. So what did it do? It has a single image with all of that information like that. And again, it's hidden these ones so that if you're happy with that, you can delete these and just have this single baked mask, or you can leave them in there and bake it again with some different settings. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap up the video there. Hopefully that gives you a good overview of the masking system in PVR Painter. I didn't go into a lot of detail about specific masks, but I did cover the general concepts so that you can now explore by yourselves and build up your understanding gradually. There's a lot you can do with this and you can create some very complex masks. So I definitely encourage you to do that exploration for yourselves. In a later video, I'll be covering how to do hand painting of your masks, along with some other ways that you can do painting in PBR Painter more generally. Anyway, that's it for me. So thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next video. Cheers.